As you can see over here, we've got the, uh, the MIDI controller off to the right. I use the Behringer BCF2000. Um, we've got the laptop computer. So if you want to use a MIDI controller, the first thing I would recommend is to pick one. There are three that I recommend uh, from Behringer. They're not the most well-built tanks in the world, but they are incredibly functional and very cost-effective. I picked the BCF 2000 because I do a lot of audio work and I like the idea of having the faders. Um, they also have the rotary, which I think is the best possible choice for Lightroom if you are able to work at a desk. And then they've got the X-Touch Mini, which is a super flexible, portable solution. In any event, whichever one you pick, um, and, and here is the one that I, I picked. Here is the, uh, the unit with the faders. And then, uh, obviously, here is the, uh, the X-Touch Mini. So very simple. The great thing about the Mini is that it's USB powered, so you don't need a separate plug. Once you have it, the first thing I would recommend that you do is to, uh, is to go to Behringer, which is music-group.com slash brand slash Behringer slash home. Head over to Downloads and then type in the name of your product, BCF2000, and then pick up, make sure you pick up the new drivers. This was important. I'm not sure what went wrong with mine. It looked like it was working just fine, except that it wouldn't read the signals. It turns out sometimes some people say it's the USB 3. Um, I, I, I really have no idea. I can tell you though, by downloading the driver, all of a sudden uh, the unit worked fine. That should be the first step that you do. The second thing that you do should be to uh, head over to MIDI 2 LR. There are also products that are free. Off, uh, one is called Patty and the other one is called Knob Room. I went over to MIDI 2 LR and headed over to uh, this site, github.com, uh, RS Jaffe slash MIDI 2 LR. I just really did a MIDI, the number 2 LR, and it brought me over to this site. Head over to new release and then download the zip. Once you unzip, uh, MIDI 2 LR. You'll want to make sure that that sits in, in a uh, folder that makes you happy. I then opened up a secondary folder. Um, where did I put it? I put it in my Dropbox because I use it across multiple programs. So I have my Lightroom plugins folder and this is where I, I unzipped uh, the download. You can see the plugin file right here and also controller settings. Here are some controller settings you can pick up uh, to get you started for Lightroom, okay? But the next thing that I did was I also created my own Lightroom MIDI 2 LR, and now this is going to be my profile. So this is a super important file that you'll need to create, okay? Once you're there, head over to Lightroom, Plugin Manager, and you'll want to add that plugin and then enable it, okay? So you just go to Add, find that folder and then uh, and then you're good to go okay now once you've done that under plugin extras you will find that you can both set options and start the server so under options you can pick which presets you like the most and so I picked a couple first is I set up my auto tone I do a lot of, I, I will sometimes just check and see what Lightroom would do to a file. So I set an auto, uh, and then I also set a, a, a preset for black and white contrast high, black and white contrast low, and a bleach preset. So this is just so I can test things very, very quickly and see what they would look like in approximation. I don't use presets a lot, so my ability to just have a very quick test was important. Okay? Once you've set your presets, go ahead over to File plug in extras, and start the server. Okay, once you start your server, you'll see a, 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 a thing that looks like this. Okay. Okay, once you start your server, you'll see something that looks like this. Now here, <clears throat> if everything is working correctly, you'll notice that as soon as you hit a fader, the file starts to change. Okay, turn down my exposure, make my exposure high, contrast, 
Here's my highlights, shadows, there's my white point, black point, and I have contrast over here to the right, and then my vibrance. Okay, those are my faders. I know them by heart. It is very fast. I can look at this and say, whoa, shadows, shadows my fourth slider. Let's just pull the highlights down, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. Let me boost up the contrast. That looks a little too surreal. Let me drop the, the clarity down a little bit here. Well, there we go, nice and bright. I've got my eye right here on the histogram so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. I still think that's a little too hot, so let me pull that down. And bring my highlights up a little bit to compensate for that with the whites. I'm gonna pull my white point down a touch. Oh no, that's my shadow, sorry. I usually have this down, there's my white point. Pick my shadows up, drop my white point down, and I can see my histogram that this looks pretty good, okay? Very, very fast. If I move a slider, this is my black point slider, I move it up and down, I don't like it, I just come over here and I can pick whatever command I can imagine and reassign it. So I could turn that into um, a perspective correction or a color balance correction or anything like that. I, I do like to have that on blacks. Okay, it's that simple. Now, it's critical, make sure that you go over to settings and that you set a folder for your selections. That's where I picked my, uh, my, my, the location of my particular settings folder. There's my profile folder, set that. It's very, very important. And once you've made any, if you've made any choices, uh, any different selections, and you will, go ahead up there and click save. <coughs> One thing is that it's very easy to get started with their profiles. If you want to start with somebody else's profile as a base point, head over to load and then bring in one of the profiles that come with the download. Okay, then once you customize it, make sure you hit save and you'll notice your profile name should be down here. Other things to pay attention to. The, uh, some of the buttons on these controllers are toggle buttons. So what that means is that it's toggle on, toggle off. Um, that doesn't work for most things. Most things, when you want to hit a button, you want something to happen. I want to hit this button and I want to go to the next folder. I don't want to go on and then off. I want to go straight to the next, or the next image. I want to go straight to the next one. To do that, you need to make sure that your buttons are set so that they are not toggle on and off, that they are just press button, impulse buttons, okay? For that, off of this Behringer, I hit edit. I hold down the button that I'm controlling. And then up uh, here on this screen, I could see what the command is, and I know that my sixth, my sixth rotary turns the toggle on or off, and I turn that to off, and then I hit exit, and I'm good to go. If you make any changes to your board, you then have to save that profile. <coughs> Excuse me, you have to save that profile. It's very important, or else that will not be stored. Okay, let's talk about my other functions that I like to use. So let's come in here. Does that work? There we go. So for me, is that about in focus? Well, I hope so. So for me, I like to set up my board this way. Exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, white, black, clarity, and vibrance. These are the commands that I use actively on every file okay so and I know them by heart okay so I can control this like a piano I could say wait contrast let's or my uh, clarity let's go up or down what if I boost up some of the vibrance okay these are my favorite commands off to the right I have photo forward and photo back and you'll notice on this machine those faders are uh, motorized, and so you'll see that they adjust. And my encoders up here also adjust, but they're encoders, so they don't move around, they, just the lights rotate. My buttons across the top are uh, my, my dials, my rotary encoders. I use temperature and tint to the left. My crop angle uh, immediately turns the image, because I will very often need to make a small adjustment there. Noise, particularly since I'm a low light photographer, I'll sometimes boost luminance, smoothing. I want to see what that looks like. And then my aesthetic choices, vignette, midpoint, and feather. So just to see what it does if I 
lighten or darken the corners. And then dehaze. Dehaze is one of those filters I found to be extremely powerful as a form of contrast, a very effective form of contrast. It's not that I use it every time, but I almost always want to see what it looks like. My next row, oh, and every one of these resets, there are buttons, pushes, so I could change my dehaze, if I, and then if I can, I can make an adjustment, I can see what it looks like, go and reset it, just push the button and it resets. My next row is zoom, in, out, this resets, you'll notice if I made some choices to this, I hit reset, everything resets back to the original settings, virtual copy, copy settings, paste settings, gray, toggles gray on or off, and then three star and five star. Over here to the right, I can pick or reject files, but apart from the rejected files, I like to tag everything three or five. Five, five are the work on immediately, threes are the ones that I'll follow up with. And so that's how that works. If I go to gray, I've also set a number of profiles. And so over here, you can see that there is general, I use general saturation luminance in gray. <clears throat> what this does is it sets these top dials for different modes. In general, it's temperature, tint, crop angle, noise. But once I go to saturation, it will adjust the saturation of the colors across the spectrum. And I've labeled every one of those colors up top. Everything from magenta all the way to uh, the orange and yellow and red off the left side. So if I want to touch just the luminance of those colors, I go here and now all of these dials have changed. But if I go to black and white, I can go to gray. And gray are the, the color balance settings for a black and white image. And then I can make my adjustments and the gray uh, and the black and white images adjusted accordingly. So very fast adjustments, extremely capable of making uh, fast work of any image. My bottom row here is set to auto. So this is to, uh, let, me, let me just go back and reset my, my image. Auto is if I want Lightroom to set up auto tone. I very often want to see what that looks like. Black and white high contrast is this button right here. I like to see what that looks like. Sometimes black and white low contrast. I'll sometimes assign a filter. So generally if I'm doing landscapes, I may just apply a green filter or something like that just to see what things look like. Um, looks terrible for this particular picture. And then as a, as a, a uh, an architectural real estate photographer, I will very often want to see what different perspectives look like. And so I have upright auto, vertical, horizontal, and off set so I can make uh, quick work of uh, of some adjustments to see what it looks like as I straighten uh, straighten vertical or horizontal lines. Okay, but that's it. So if we were to come back here, and we're looking at this particular image, and I can look at the highlights, and the shadows, and I can look at this and say, well, wait a second. Let's start to boost contrast. That no, doesn't work. Let's lower the contrast here give a lot more detail. Maybe I'll boost the clarity. So I'm kind of making a trade-off between overall contrast and mid mid range contrast and see what it looks like to push that uh, white point up a little bit with the highlights. I want to open up the shadows a tiny bit, tiny bit, not too much. I want to boost up the, the vibrance, see if I like it. In this case I do. And then I move on to the next photo. I can look at this. I can make some adjustments. If I like what I did on the other one, I can come back here. I can hit copy settings. I can go over to the next one. I can hit paste settings. Everything is done. Okay, so this is what it means to make adjustments. So I want to take a quick look at, uh, at what it means to, to play with the, 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 uh, the, the white balance, my color temperature. That looks pretty good. Maybe in this one I want to open it up by lightening the corners there we go let's set the proper midpoint maybe dehaze might be fun on this one too just to bring out a little bit of the extra sharpness oh look at that it looks great next photo I want to reject this photo I don't like the way it looks hit reject when I reject a photo or rate a photo it automatically moves to the next one 
anyway, I hope that helps. Um, is there anything else? No, nope, I think that's it. I hope you've, you've enjoyed this. I hope you find it helpful. And uh, I hope it saves thousands of hours of your, your time and, uh, and lets you do things that are more fun and productive. Okay? Have a great day.